leather rock here using my original computer because for some reason my webcam isn't working on the other machine. Today we are going to do a makeup tutorial featuring the B&H Cosmetics Special Occasion Palette. This has a lot of neutrals as you can see but it also has a lot of blush, bronzer, and even a, a, a non-frosty highlighting option. And I'm going to show you how to do a cut crease, smoky eye, with a very, very dark plum purple in the crease, and this pink color here, which is actually one of the blushes. I tried my best to use as much as possible from this palette, because I don't know about you, but when I watch makeup tutorials, it's supposed to be about a palette. I want to find out what uh, uses I could get out of that palette. And sometimes if people use a whole lot of other products, it can be a little misleading. So I'm using everything I can from this. Now, I'm going to tie my hair back so it doesn't get messed up. And, you know, I'm starting to think maybe you need three different forms of working equipment so that if two break down, you still have working equipment. Okay, here's how we're going to get started. I think I have everything I need here. All right, the fun part here involving my taking off half of my makeup. Again, I'm using my trusty uh, coconut oil that I love so much. Mm, I wish you could smell it. Smells good, tastes good. And say goodbye to the makeup. Oh. Okay. Hopefully I have everything I need here in the room so I don't have to go off camera for anything. And I hope I have enough tissues to do the cleanup. You know, all this is all trial and error. You find out what works. You can't be afraid to make mistakes. Unless, of course, time is of the essence and you've got people depending on you. Then you don't want to mess up. Okay, as usual, I'm not bothering with the eyebrows because I already put them on. And that's, I don't want to waste your time doing that. Now, got my, it's with me, got my brushes here. First thing we're going to do is start off with the layer that we're going to use on the bottom. There's always more than one way to do the layer on the bottom. Now, I'm going to use this e.l.f. Complete Coverage Concealer. And since I'm covering it all up with a bunch of makeup, Usually I use the lightest shade, but in this case it kind of doesn't matter because all the makeup that's covering it is kind of heavy. So, and if you hear me yelling at anybody in the background, it's my cat, my tabby boy. I told him, I said, I want him to stay in the room when I'm filming because these videos always seem to go better with a cat in the background. And any of my videos, if there's not a cat, in the corner or someplace. It just isn't the same. Now, one of the things I'm going to do here that I don't often do, I'm going to actually, because I'm doing a cut crease and involves a lot of dark smoky eye color, I'm going to go into this palette and I'm going to take the second to the lightest color and I'm going to Tabby boy, stop that! Oh, meow meow yourself. I'm going to take this and I'm going to just go a little bit over the eye just to make it a little tiny bit less sticky for what I'm about to do. Then I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to go into this dark plum color here. And see, these are kind of small uh, tins. I mean, just a little bit. You don't need a whole lot on the brush. And I'm going in the crease like this. Okay. 
but I'm not just starting at the crease. I'm actually taking the color pretty much all the way down to the lash line. You know, the, the, the one thing about doing this particular technique is trying to make sure that the eyes get uh, to be symmetrical. Tabby boy, you better be good. Okay, I'm covering this up. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is we're going to create a cut crease. And I'm going to use a makeup brush for this and I'm going to use here is the color that I'm going to use you can use really any remotely foundation like color and I'm going to use one of the colors here from this elf complete coverage concealer and Look what I'm going to do here. I'm going to carve out. This is what they mean by cutting the crease. You take this tabby boy. Stop that. You take the brush. And you cover. Uncover. An area using this foundation light color. You're exposing. An area of your eyelid. You're fleshing it out. With a sticky color that you are going to end up covering with the pink. Okay, you see what I did here? Now hopefully this is the same size as the pink here. Now, next thing we're going to do, we're going to take this palette. Now, do you see this pink blush color? Take the brush. Get some color on the brush. Now you don't want to do too much because you don't want to get fallout underneath because I have foundation and stuff underneath and I'm out of any kind of setting powder so I wasn't able to do any kind of baking or anything which is a good technique for if nothing else not only helping to keep the wrinkles from being accentuated by your, your uh, concealer but it also helps to make it clean up so much easier when you have fallout from eyeshadow. Take the pink and you cover that area that you exposed by cutting it with your foundation or concealer. Usually people use concealer. Now, I'm patting over this area. Don't want to do a lot of rubbing back and forth because I don't want to disturb the plum color underneath. And you're not really trying to blend it. You're just trying to cover that area that you quote unquote carved out. Okay, see? That's your second step here. Now, we're going to take another brush. I've, I've organized them all and put them. Okay, I'm going to take this brush here. This is another e.l.f. brush. These are for packing, these are not really for sweeping and blending. I'm going to take this palette. I'm going to use the sparkly black on the bottom. All the colors on this are being used from this palette. Now, to make the side match the side, I'm going to go right in the corner. Because I want the, the corners to be dark. Making kind of a little triangular point. Now, let's see if that matches this one. I really hope to get this symmetrical. I was on the phone with Best Buy earlier trying to get the other webcam to work, and I was getting kind of frustrated because I get frustrated with technology. And uh, I... Finally, we realized that we couldn't do the remote session for whatever reason. And I don't suppose there's an internet problem because my internet is working. But then I decided to check, try my, my computer 
that the one that's battery's been draining, and for some interesting reason, the battery is actually up to 44%, which means I should be able to film today. Okay, now I'm going to take this brush. No, I'm going to take this brush. And I'm going to take the white shade on this. And I'm going to go over just to differentiate between where the brow bone is and your eyebrow. You want to try not to get into the eyebrow makeup because that will turn the white pink. Hopefully, they're both matching. Now, now we're going to use, this is the eyeliner I used, Maybelline Master Precise. It's, uh, it's not waterproof, but one thing I like about it is compared to some of my other liquid eyeliners, it doesn't seem to give me the raccoon eye thing when I blink my eyes. I mean, this thing, for not being a waterproof eyeliner, it seems to be pretty budge-proof. I can wear this eyeliner when I go out dancing, um, and I can break a sweat doing so. And I can wear this eyeliner when I'm working out, and I mean serious break a sweat workout, like working out with weights and boxing moves and stuff. And this eyeliner holds up. And yet, not being waterproof, the cleanup is easy. Now, I wouldn't try wearing it in a snowstorm or something, which is what we got going outside my window right now. But this is a real fine point. Uh, one thing, you don't want to poke yourself in the eye with this. So if you've got late neighbors that slam their doors and stuff, you might want to be careful. Okay, how does that look? Okay, now this is the mascara that I'm using. This is by LA Colors. It is the Lash Building Formula. This is not waterproof, but it's the, it's a pretty good little mascara. It holds the curl of the lashes. It has not smeared on me, even going out dancing, working out. I mean, I, I would just as soon wear a waterproof mascara if I'm going to be sweating and stuff. But you know what? Right now, it's still winter time. Well, actually, yesterday was the first day of spring. But I don't wear waterproof mascaras if I don't have to. Uh, it all depends on if I think it's going to smudge with the makeup or something. Nobody wants your makeup to run or smudge. And especially if you have to keep on fixing it when you're out and about. I mean, who has time for that? And I know I'm not the only one that gets really frustrated when I have to keep on repairing a makeup job when I'm outside, I'm out in public, posing for pictures. And of course, you don't find out that you were smudged until after the picture is taken and you've got the raccoon eyes going. And it's bad enough men almost never seem to notice. Here, let me take my hair down. I don't tie it up unnecessarily. Do you notice that men never seem to really notice if you've got like eyeliner running and you're looking like Alice Cooper? The men don't seem to notice. And sometimes the women don't say anything either. Now, I don't know if this is because, generally speaking, it's late at night and most of the people around you are drinking. But still, I would really like it better if people would be more, let you know what's going on. Just like if I see a lady coming out of the ladies' room and she's got toilet paper trailing on her shoe, I let her know. I would want somebody to do that for me. But I would really like it if my friends and people would let me know if eyeliner is running or something. Just like if you got a booger sticking out of your nose, wouldn't you want somebody to let you know? Okay, back to the makeup. Now, in lieu of my usual contour products, I'm actually going to use... Oh, actually, I did already, but I'll show you what I did. This color here... I use this, and I, it's a little bit, just you don't want to go past here when you're doing contour, because if you go too far down, you're actually going to 
Uh, why, there's a reason why you're not supposed to do it. I think it's because it's if you do it shorter like this, it gives you a look like you're giving yourself a facelift. If you pull it all the way down, it's supposed to be dragging, and maybe you don't look as youthful or something. I don't know. And unless you're in your teens and you're trying to get served because you want to drink, in which case you don't want to look youthful. But for the rest of us, you want to look youthful. Now, this is the blush color that I used. I ended up using this color here. Swished a little bit. I really don't want to put any more on because it's easy to overdo it with the blush, which is what I used to do. I don't want to say what decade, but now if you want to know what lip color I'm wearing, this is by NYC. And the number is 447. And let me see if I could read the color. If it has a color name. Um, something that begins with an F. And then fuchsia. Now this looks more hot pink than fuchsia to me. But I figured since I have pink cut crease, pink lipstick would be a good idea. If you're wondering what my eyebrow color is. It is Revlon Color Stay Liquid Lip in Black Cherry. And I've gone through so many of these. Okay, that was my makeup video. I'm about to power down if I don't st uh, stop, so I guess this is it. If you want me to have more of these videos, subscribe and hit the bell notification. You'll know when I make more. Love making these videos. I'll keep them coming if you want. Talk to you soon. Bye.